Fender Deluxe Reverb reissue. And the Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. We've got money to spend, which one are we going to buy? Sweet. Sounds good. Sounds great. The sound of the Fender uh, 65 reissue deluxe reverb. Sound of ages. Righteous. Uh, hello and welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Um, okay, so you've seen the title of the video. You know what it's about. Uh, why are we doing this, Dan? Because we don't have one and yeah. we want one. So um, in all the years of that pedal show, it is... Many, many years. Many, many years. It is entirely remiss that we don't have a deluxe reverb. Indeed, indeed. It's kind of crazy because it is, it's such a popular amp. Mm -hmm. It's the backbone of so much rock and roll. Yeah. You know, that black face Fender sound um, from the mid sixties there. And in its reissue form, it's a phenomenally popular amplifier for a range of reasons. Um, a, it sounds great. Mm. B, it's got reverb. Lovely reverb. Uh, C, it's a really sweet spot in terms of power. Yes. So 22 watts. 6v6, a pair of 6v6 output tubes, and a 1x12 speaker, which means it's lightweight relatively. We'll come on to discuss that soon. Uh, it's powerful enough for what Americans refer to as small clubs. Okay. What we refer to as pubs, probably. And just has this really great point where it breaks up. Yeah. Just a really nice place in terms of power and dynamics and response and all that. And it's kind of crazy that we don't have one. Mm. So we made a decision, and the decision is we're going to buy one. We are, indeed. And we're either going to buy this one or that one, because mm -hmm. the other question we get asked... Why don't you try, if we've got one, why don't you try the Tone Master? And for anyone not following at this point, uh, Fender brought out the Tone Master maybe last year. Yes. Tone Master series. Mm -hmm. There's a deluxe reverb and there is a, a twin reverb version. They're digital modeling amps. So gone are the valves mm -hmm. and all the kind of normal circuitry you would find in a valve amp. No spring tank. No Just spring no. tank. Everything's digital. A uh, couple of significant benefits. One, it's a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. Two, it weighs next to nothing. Crazy. Uh, and... I don't know whether this is marketing actually from Fender or whether it's just what I've heard friends and colleagues say. So there is a great deal of digital modeling power in that. Right. And instead of throwing it at... A thousand different amplifiers. And yes. 58 different effects yep. and everything else, they've gone, let's just make it sound... Like a deluxe reverb. Like a deluxe reverb. Okay. Being in here and playing here loud is one thing. What we did yesterday was we plugged them in next door in our little vlog studio, which is a bit more akin to, you know, maybe your sitting room at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and here's how we got on. And we're back in the room. Yeah, the different room. Um, so it will sound really echoey and a bit weird in here uh, because it just does. What we thought we'd do is replicate a kind of home situation in, in a way. So we're going to play really quiet, just um, guitars straight into the amps. 
Because uh, this is reality for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, and we haven't heard them yet. No. Or well, we've heard Deluxe Reaver a million times, but mm-hmm. we I have yet to hear a Tone Master in the flesh. So, Daniel. So this is the Deluxe Reaver, sort of super quiet. What are your thoughts? It's a deluxe reverb. What can it's, you hear? It's very bright. It's very quick. Um, yeah, like all the top end. Yeah, if we were in the... I'm talking up here because there's a microphone up here. If we were in the studio now, that would be about 75 dB, if that. Yeah. Really, really home quiet. We can talk, we can, we can talk over that without any, yeah. any problems at all. Right then. I know the knob positions may well be arbitrary in terms of the tapers may be different and the functions might be different, but right. we'll start there, okay? Sure, sure. Um, so we'll be on two and a bit. Okay. Go. It's on. That's interesting. Give, give me give me a couple chords. is it feels like there's a compressor on with that one. Right. That's like I'm getting more sustain. Well, different sustain. It's, more, it's like, <laughs> it's um, not that, that that one doesn't sustain, of course it does, but that's like just a more even. It's the mid range is it, in a different place. Yeah, yeah. And I guess we could tweak all day. But um, let's have a quick listen to the reverbs. Okay. Listen, I'll play the strat. Okay, yep.
At this volume, it's, I mean, it's really impressive. So what I hear, that sounds really good. It sounds really nice. It's got more bottom end and it's pleasing to play. But when I plug into that, I hear a, a deluxe reverb. The mid range is very different. Very different. And I think, I think. So you probably could, you probably could tweak the bass and treble to get closer to the mid range response. Well, I do. So I turned down the, the bottom end, trying to get rid of that largeness, but it, it, it didn't really work. Um, I think that sounds really nice. It sounds very comfortable to play. Like to me, it felt like it had a compressor on. Yeah. But that, it's like, okay, I've got to, I've got to sing for my supper with that. What, that I'm, I'm, it might be that that's what I'm used to, um, just pick both of them up a sec, just take the weight and see what you think. Well, I know this one, that's what I was expecting for that one. Oh, blink an egg. Okay. It's just nothing. That's crazy. I don't even know if you could do it with one finger. Right, to the back cave. So that'll work. Pretty righteous. You can see why they're so popular, can't Man you? Man alive. Uh, what did you, you switched on a compressor there, overdrive, yep. delay. Yep. You know, the, the, the term good pedal platform gets used a lot. Yeah. Check. Yeah. And so normally the volume that we have the amps on in here, it's, you know, it's mm. a weighty, you sort of lean back on it. That you can even, I mean, the amp's not cranked. No, 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 we'll get to that. But it already feels like the app's working. Yeah, so when we were in the vlog studio, I think we were somewhere between two and three on the volume control. Okay. And actually what we've discovered about the Tone Master is that it gets louder quicker okay. than the yep, other one. Yep. So we'll see how that works out. Yep. Uh, you know, tapers of volume pots, programming, all that. It doesn't, doesn't really matter where the knobs are set. You just need to get it in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. Where we are currently on this uh, Deluxe Reverb reissue is four and a half on the volume right. knob. Now, I played them in the past where that would overdrive right. quite a bit with, okay. a, with a humbucker, and I'm not sure where we are with that. It's overdriving a bit, but not it's a huge amount. on the edge. And this guitar uh, is quite a light sounding humbucker mm. guitar. Mm. It's not a heavy humbucker guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, bridge pickup, obviously. Um, and I don't know where, anyone clock what we were saying on the dB meter there? Okay, let's try that again. That's very doable, that volume. Guesses? Oh, I'm going to say 94, 95? We hit 100. No. Just. Okay. It, it just tweaked 100 for a second there. 
Ready? Okay. I'm not quite sure where the volume is set, so we will find out. So that little bit of crunch and how it tails off into the, the drippiness of the spring reverb. Can we see if we can get that crunch out of the, the other amplifier? Yes, it, it's reading more on the dB meter. Okay. So reading that's... nearly 4 dB more. Does okay. it sound louder to you? Uh, it just sounds cleaner. Yeah. Okay. So where are we going then? What are we doing? I just wanted to turn it up until, I just want to see, because the edge of that of the note is, that's, Mm. Gorgeous, and the way that drips into the reverb is like you—that's a sound that I've heard so many times. It's lovely. I want to see if by, if by turning the amp up just a little bit that it starts to break up in that way. We may have to introduce the attenuator because if I think if I turn it up, it's just going to get louder and cleaner. Let's, so on okay. the, on the back of the Tone Master, there's a, like a four or five way attenuator. So it might be need, we need to drop the power a bit and overdrive it a bit more. Okay, but it's, it's, okay. Let's see. I'll, I'll turn be, it up. I think it's up. just going to get louder. Let's, all right, let's try. Started overdriving pretty nicely. It got into overdrive. Okay. A little bit. Mid range bit. is completely different. So different. Completely different. Right. One of the issues we have mm -hmm. is there is a bass and a treble control. Right. So my feeling is if I turn the treble and the bass down a bit. Do you need to turn the bass down a bit? Maybe the treble a little bit. Because the, the only way we can change the mid-range is by changing change, the bass and yep, the treble. Exactly. So you, you have Schwang for a second. Let's see if we okay. can work out where that mid-range thing's happening. All right. That's just beautiful. Okay, so here we go. That's the deluxe reverb on five. Okay. Let's try turning down the power. Yeah, then. try that just as one last thing, because uh, the next question is the speaker, which we'll do at the end. Sure, okay. Okay, well, I'll go one, I'll attenuate down one step. Okay. So we could, we could turn that up a little bit more now. Yeah, the mid range is in a just vastly different spot. Okay, seeing as I'm on the attenuator, let's have a listen to it. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. I 
I'll ask Fraser to switch over to the room mics at this point, the, the voice mics here, because they probably aren't being overdriven um, by the amp. It's at 0.2 watts, I think, which is kind of nothing, and you can hear me talking over it. So you're now hearing it through these microphones above my head. As I turn it up, I'll we'll switch back to the uh, mics on the cabs because um, it will overdrive these and they'll sound horrible. Okay, I'm going to go to Apple II, I'm just going to kick a couple of pedals on. Yeah, let's, uh, so I've gone, I've, what you heard there was, um, what you heard there was both amps on seven. Right. Um, so we were getting lovely overdriving compression. Mm -hmm. We'll go back now to about five, which okay. seems like a pretty decent yeah. midpoint sure. with a bit of headroom left in the amp. And we'll ha let's have a listen to some pedals. Okay, great. Yeah, so we've, we've chosen a fairly sensible selection of pedals, like mm -hmm. the kinds of things that are pretty common, like a Tube Screamer, which has a mid hump to its overdrive, a Blues Driver, which is a sort of flatter frequency response, or well, a bit more bass and treble anyway, still mm -hmm. has a bit of a mid hump, a Marshall Flavor, um, and then a, a Chorus, Compressor, Fuzz, and Echo, all easily available stuff and super common sounds. Yep, yep. Uh, let's have a bit of Tube Screamer, shall we, Dan? Just I'll get the strut out in a second. Perfect.
interesting. Sorry, 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 sorry. Very interesting. Different. Very different. Very different. Um, actually, under the fingers, the feel's not a million miles off. This feels chewier because mm -hmm. of that mid-range. It's a bit warmer. That, that whole thing is at mid-range. It's quite different. I see. Okay. This is me being cynical. Yeah. The that mid-range, which is something that um, when you're playing in bands, that is the that is the mid-range that lets you be heard. And which is why that amp is so popular, right? In a mix, it sounds beautiful. Yeah. I wonder if, if the first time you pick up a tube amp, if it's that, that mid-range isn't pleasant. Right, because it sounds a little honky. Yeah. Well, I mean, you say that. The, the deluxe reverb is, or the at least the Fender Blackface sound, is supposedly very mid-scooped, isn't it? It is at low volumes. But yeah. what's happened once we've turned it up, that mid-range has gone, hello. hello. Let's um, let's try some clean... Let's forget the pedals for a second. Yep. We're up, we're up nice and loud. I just want to try some clean stuff from yeah, the yeah. Strat, just to sort of see, you know, uh, how that works. Sure. Yeah. Um, and now something to play. <laughs> What did you change? Why? What did you change? Just the amps. Because the difference there is absolutely massive. Yeah, just the amps. Let me just try this a sec. Still very noticeable, slightly less noticeable on the single note stuff. Yeah. But that chord, man, I can't just let me try that again. So the mid is in sorry, my guitar's really creaking on my jeans. The um the mid is in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And then what you then hear is this really super sparkly treble. Okay. At this point in the game, I don't think we need to go any further. Sure. It's pretty clear at this point which one we would buy, right? Mm -hmm. Interestingly though, that when we were louder and using the pedals, for me, I, 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 I wasn't expecting it to sound as good as it did. Yeah. And I actually thought, actually, a few points there, I was like, oh. There was some fidelity there. Was there. Some, there really was. Yeah, yeah. Did, and I thought, that was, and that was surprising. Yeah, I would not be unhappy using no, that sound. No, no, not at all. So I am, uh, yes, I prefer that. Yeah. But I'm really, I am impressed. Yeah. Um, it, with certain, you know, at volume. Yeah. Um, and with certain pedal combinations, I thought, yeah, cool. Okay, uh, regular viewers will know that I am no fan of neodymium speakers. Yeah, yeah. This will be um, interesting. And this isn't just a straight prejudice. It's having had to record quite a few of them in a professional environment um, and really struggling to re-EQ the, the sound thereafter. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see Fraser. Yeah, whether you... In a blazer with his laser taser. Yeah. We'll see <laughs> how, how uh, it goes. Yeah, so we should have said this at the top, but just for the record, same mics, absolutely the same preamp channel strip, same position on the speaker, relatively speaking. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take the speaker out of the equation mm. by um, putting a 1x12 cab down uh, and using the both amps into the same cab, and we'll hear that. Quick question. Is there cab sim going on in the Deluxe? It has... It has a XLR direct out with cab simulation on it. Okay, but that's not happening in the... Let's amp. let's let's just test that. Okay. Because if it is, we'll have to start again. <laughs> um, I'm assuming the cab sim only works on the direct Pretty out. Pretty sure but... the cab sim is currently off. Yeah. And it only works on the direct out. Okay, so, great. Well, okay. Play. No, let's, let's prove the point. Let's okay. prove the point. All right.
Dan's been having lessons again. Um, it will get you nowhere. I should it won't get, get you gigs, it all those fancy no, chords, no, all right? It will not. It will It'll not. just get you thrown out. Keyboard player be like, it's my job. It's you. Ouch. Yeah, you just look average. <laughs> um, I wish. <laughs> so average would be a big step up for me. That's most guitar players' job, isn't it? Um, that's included. Just, I turn the cab sim on and off just to make sure that it, it wasn't affected. Yeah, and yeah, it, cool. obviously it only works on the XLR direct out. What does that sound like? Um, in this environment, we don't care too much. We're really talking about the sound of the amps. Yeah. Okay. Let's line them up. Seamless. Seem absolutely seamless. Right. What we've done is we have introduced uh, my custom made Zilla 1x12, which has a WGS 12L speaker. Now we could have chosen any speaker, but arbitrarily we've just chosen this speaker. It's a very clean sounding speaker. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't get, shouldn't be getting too much speaker coloration. Mm -hmm. And it's a 112 open back cab in the same way that the two combos are one by 12 open back cabs. Very good. Um, we did have to do a little bit of um, jiggery pokery. Jiggery pokery on the Tone Master because it has a hardwired speaker. Don't tell them though, because we might have to send it back. Yeah, don't tell them that we had to disconnect the speaker and then rewire it onto another speaker lead. Don't tell them that. Um, thankfully, the Deluxe Reverb has a normal speaker output and an extension speaker output, so the Tone Master doesn't have the ability to run. Oh yes, an extension okay, cam. yeah, right. Okay, or at least not one that we can but see. But we're not in the extension one, we're in the normal one. Normal one, normal speaker, yes. So um, there will be a little bit of uh, pokery jiggery while we just swap the cab, uh, the, the speaker leads over and Simon can edit that out. Um, I, th I think we're plugged into the... Oh, the other thing we've had to do is swap the amps around because um, the speaker cable wouldn't reach. However, the only sound you're hearing is coming out of that cream cab there. So it doesn't matter which amp is on which side. hearing a tremendous amount of extra presence and top end. Yep. Uh, can we dial some of that back out? Yeah, sure. Of uh, that one. So for the record, the uh, Tone Master, which I thought sounded overly trebly, the treble control was between four and five. And on the 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue, it's on five and six. So it's actually set higher in that amp, but this amp sounds much treblier. Uh -huh. So let's dial it down a bit and see if that, if that, if that sorts it out. Dan has now turned the treble down to two, and it's now off. Now Dan, off. Would you would you would you just prove to me that that actually is the tone master and turn the volume down to zero and back up to where it is currently? Treble is now off in the Tone Master. Could you turn the treble up to 10, please? Oh, fire out. I just wanted to check that the treble pop was actually working. Okay, um, tube screamer. Tube I'll do a bit of tube screamer on here and yep. then we'll go over there. Okay, I'll leave the treble off there, yeah? Um, let's yeah. see, okay. see what we get to. so hard to play the same thing. 
Let me just let me just riff about a bit. Yeah, sure. Turn the delay on. Riff about a bit. Yep. Um, delay, 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 delay. Oh, there you are. Um, I'll just riff about a bit and uh, and then we'll swap. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Tell you what's interesting there, the Tube Screamer seems to even out a lot of the weird EQ that we thought we were hearing mm. in that, in the uh, Tone Master, sorry. Just adding the mids back in. Better, I thought, with the Tube Screamer. Yeah. Okay, come and have a play. Uh, let's listen to the reverb and the tremolo to finish off, shall we? Okay. Or do you want to hit, do you want to black through any pedals just to get a feel? I think you should. Sure. I think you should. pretty clear to me yeah certainly as you started piling on the pedals there um definitely some good sounds in there definitely some of the clean sounds with the with the presence of the high end you might really love that yeah i think it's been voiced for that neodymium speaker. yeah I, I was expecting it to sound much darker through the wgs yeah, me too. but actually a lot of that it almost feels like a lot of that high end has been tamed yeah in the neo speaker which is my experience of neo speakers is they have a particular crackle right so it'll be really interesting to see if that is borne out in the audio here or whether Sure. You know, whether it's not, whether this is a this is a Jensen Neo speaker, by the way. Um, sure. That's a Jensen ceramic speaker in there. So, okay. We obviously prefer the reissue. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's I think it's fair enough to say that that's the one we're going to. Purchase. Yeah, and not uh, you know, God, not just a little bit. No, no. So yeah. So what? Who would be a good fit? I'm just trying to think for that. The Tone Master. I think you can sculpt it. You can right. definitely sculpt it, and I think um, maybe at lower volume levels, even at higher volume levels, if you want to use For me, it sounded the, better at higher volume levels. If you want to turn it up and use the attenuator. Yes, if okay. If you want to use the direct out and the speaker simulation, right. we haven't even listened to that. Yeah. Um, you know. It, so it does. It ticks boxes that the that the reissue doesn't. Tick. Well, we've said this before, haven't we? So much gear is sold on features and benefits. Yeah, yeah. And whether you actually use those features and benefits is a real question you need to answer. Mm. So I would never ever use a direct out. No. Um, and I probably would never use an attenuator. So there's two things that aren't applicable to me. Sure. I just want an amp I can stick a mic in front of. But yeah, um, I guess a lot of these are being sold uh, for use at home. Mm-hmm practice and stuff like that mm -hmm. so you just don't need the barking crazy no i mean even though it's only 22 watts it's loud yeah it's definitely. really loud and yeah. not not everyone well hardly anyone gets to crank up a deluxe reverb in their home so yeah. having that attenuator is a is a big deal in the tone master yeah but yeah pure sound wise going with pedals it, it it's not a small difference to sure. me yeah, yeah do you agree no absolutely 100 percent. okay yeah. let's finish off let's have a listen to the um reverb and tremolo then um, we, we may as well stick on the uh, WGS cab, seeing as that's what we're into. Sure. Um, I'll just dial in some reverb and tremolo, have a play. Yeah, lovely. And then we'll swap it over. Yep, lovely. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> cool sound what did you wow. have on it just the squeegee just the compressor so just the compressor uh nice yeah so, you, I can, you, so you can tell they've spent quite a lot of time on the reverb and, and the uh vibrato on the yeah on, on the, the tone master but man alive that's the, yeah i mean wow yeah it's a different thing um there'll probably be those of you screaming out saying please show us the amp settings please show us the amp settings um all you really need to know is that the volumes 
for this last comparison have been between four and five. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 uh, EQ is sort of midway, and then I was just adjusting the reverb and tremolo to taste. We say it over and over again, please don't worry about specific knob settings because it totally depends on the pedals you're using, the guitar you're using and how you play. So try not to get too fixed on that. Mm -hmm. um, just, I guess, trust us in a way to set it so that it sounds the same to us in the room. Okay, um, if Fender or sell us one of these, our money's clearly going to the 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue. Sure. There'll be those of you screaming out, why didn't you do this blindfold? Um, I think blindfold tests are fooey because they take away so many of your other senses and playing the guitar is a, a complete sensory experience. It's not just about what goes in your ears. Um, but I don't think there'd be much problem telling no. which was which, is no. there? No, indeed. indeed. Um, and if you want to do your own blindfold test, please do stick a blindfold on and uh, see how you get on. Yeah, don't drive like that, though. No. Um, well, yeah. Okay, uh, if, if Fender will, will allow us to buy this direct from them, we will. If not, we shall phone up our friend Mr. Anderton and buy one from him. Yeah. And a deluxe reverb reissue will be uh, ensconced on that pedal show. Hoorah! Yeah. I'm now fascinated because I, I I have fallen in love with that amplifier. <laughs> right? It's crazy we haven't had one until now. Uh, it's like this guitar and that amplifier is, I'm, I'm in deep... I mean, deep Schmidt. You don't say. Imagine that. Um, so I want to hear it with the uh, with um, the matchless now. Yeah, yeah. I bet that does sound incredible. All of this is upcoming. All this, yes. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy most of this stuff. Yes, and to our friends in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Yes, hello to Matt and Nikki and all the people there. Um, and Sweetwater. Yeah, Sweetwater. There'll be links to all this stuff or anything that Sweetwater sells. There'll be links to it. Uh, in the description. If you click on that and buy stuff, it helps me and Dan out uh, as another way to fund this show. And to buy my new app. Oh, yes, and buy <laughs> this. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and also, uh, that pedal show store com. where you can go for your uh, T-shirts and d and drives. Journals and, and all that stuff. Yes, and, and even some CDs. Available yes. Now. Um, what we don't need to tell Dan is that they do a custom shop hand-wired version oh, of that. You're we don't need. We, we don't need to tell him that, okay? Um, so yeah, we should compare it to a Hot Rod Deluxe. We, yes. We should compare it to a Tweed Deluxe. Yes. But at least we're halfway there now. We're halfway there. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Very good. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Uh, join us on Monday, 5 p.m. Um, uh, London time. Yeah, where you can kick the crap out of us for doing <laughs> this. <laughs> we'll see you there. Take care, Mike. Bye. Bye.